Breaking NASCAR Silly Season news, Eric Almarola postpones his retirement. He will return to the 10 car next year. Did this just complicate Kyle Busch's contract situation further? <laughs> How's it going, y'all? My name is Eric. Welcome to Out of the Groove. Just doing a quick video real quick. I was actually in the middle of editing a much larger episode for later this afternoon, but this news broke and I figured this was a little more pressing. So yes, motorsport.com, Jim Utter just reported that Eric Almarola will not retire at the end of this year. He will return to Stuart Haas Racing for one more season. Back in the 10 car, Smithfield will return as the main primary sponsor. No surprise there. Jim Utter writes that an official announcement is coming in the next couple of weeks, but we now know that Eric Almarola will not retire at year's end. Almarola is only 38 years old. He would have been kind of on the young end of NASCAR drivers to retire recently, but he announced way back in January that this would be his final season. He cited a number of reasons, but chief among them, he cited NASCAR's rigorous week to week, day to day schedule, wanting to spend more time with his family, with his kids. He's ready to take on the next chapter of life. Well, Smithfield must have sweetened the deal, or maybe it was Stuart Haas Racing. I'm not gonna speculate too much on how this whole deal came together. I'm sure Eric Almarola will be asked by reporters this weekend at Watkins Glen and we'll get some new details there. But my guess is that Almarola was probably set on retiring and then Stuart Haas, knowing that if Almarola leaves, Smithfield leaves, Stuart Haas Racing probably came in and offered Almarola a pay raise, maybe some sort of bonus. You know, sweeten the deal a bit to convince him to come back here because Stuart Haas doesn't wanna lose a solid veteran driver in Eric Almarola, but more importantly, they don't wanna lose that near full season of sponsorship that Smithfield provides. Eric Almarola and Smithfield's relationship goes back like a decade now. They have been loyal, loyal partners with Eric Almarola since his Richard Petty Motorsports days. They both will return to the 10 car next season. I'm sure many Eric Almarola fans are happy about this news, but I want to talk in a moment about how this affects Kyle Busch, the other major silly season fish in this pond. But one final note on Eric Almarola, I do want to give him some credit. It. He hasn't been great the last couple of years, statistically taking a, a sharp step downwards. You know, a lot of that could probably be attributed to Stuart Haas Racing. They have not been as dominant of a team the last couple of years, not since 2020. But despite this, Almarola still managed to find a way to win last year and make the playoffs. Almarola has made the playoffs every single year he's been with Stuart Haas Racing. That goes back to 2018, 19, the weird year of 20, 2021. This may be the first year he misses the playoffs. He's currently, I guess he's 17th, but he's like 150 points out. He needs to win one of these next two races and he could win Daytona. He absolutely could, he has before. But Almarola deserves some credit for that. He's won three races in his Cup Series career. That's hard to do. A lot of people have tried and failed to reach even that mark. And since he's come over to a big team, SHR, He's rewarded them with a playoff appearance every single year, except maybe this year. So he's not a bad driver. I've never thought of him as you know, horribly overrated or, or even necessarily undeserving of that seat. You gotta remember who drove that car before he did. So I just wanna give him at least some amount of credit. I'm looking forward to seeing him back behind the wheel next year. We saw some good speed out of him earlier this summer, like last weekend at Richmond, had a top five car. Hopefully we see more of that over the coming months. But now we have to talk about what this means for Kyle Busch because Stuart Haas Racing has been seen as a legitimate contender to sign Kyle Busch really all summer long, mainly because that 10 car was expected to be vacant. Of course, over the past few weeks, more and more rumors started to circulate that Almarola would return, but still it wasn't confirmed, the 10 car, could that be a legit option for Kyle Busch? I think many would have said yes. Now it's off the table, which means if Kyle Busch hopes to drive for you know, one of the top teams in NASCAR, one of the big four, you know, SHR, Penske, Joe Gibbs Racing, or Hendrick, he's gonna have to replace a driver who we believe is currently safe. Like I talked about yesterday, the rumors that he could replace Alex Bowman a year before Bowman's contract expires. He's gonna have to do something like that. Of course, he could still sign with Joe Gibbs Racing. I guess that's the one exception. If JGR does land him, keeps him in the 18, that's the exception, but it sounds like everyone believes Ty Gibbs is getting the 18 car at this point. So Kyle Busch is gonna have to swoop in at the 11th hour and replace a driver that we all believe is set for next year. I don't think the possibility of Kyle Busch going to SHR is completely dead, not yet. I think it's a little less likely, I'm a little less confident about this than I was even just a few days ago, but the 41 car is where my eyes look next. Kyle Busch isn't replacing Kevin Harvick in the four, we know that. I'm 100% open to having Kyle, you know, as a teammate. And I can tell you that 
having a teammate like Kyle makes my car run faster. He's not replacing Chase Briscoe in the 14. We now know he's not replacing Eric Almirola in the 10, but Cole Custer, I cannot mince words, he has been a major disappointment since getting that seat in 2020. Outside of that amazing overtime restart at Kentucky where he grabbed the win, Custer has practically been off the grid. He spent almost all of last season outside the top 25 in points, and he's back that year up with somehow an even worse statistical season this year. Actually, check that. I believe he got a top 10 at Michigan, so he's matched his number of top 10s from last season. Good job. Two. Two top 10s in an SHR car. I like Cole Custer. He seems like a very nice guy, but he is not getting the job done in that car. Is it all him? Probably not. When he's dipped down to the Xfinity series in the last two years, he's been really, really good. But whatever the reasons may be, Cole Custer in that 41 has not produced results the last couple of years. So Kyle Busch, I think, is still very much a potential candidate for the 41. That's a car that doesn't have a ton of its own sponsorship. Gene Haas is funding the majority of that car's races with his own company, with his own funds. Cole Custer demands a fraction of Kyle Busch's salary, but if you know you can bring Kyle Busch in, plug him in there, and dramatically improve that car's results, maybe it's worth the extra investment if you're Gene Haas or even Tony Stewart. Remember what Greg Zipidelli told reporters just earlier this week. When asked if Cole Custer will stay with Stuart Haas Racing, Zipidelli said, quote, Right now, I believe that's what our plan is. Yes, we're just looking and trying to sort out the 10 car at this particular time. To me, that sounds like they're going to keep him in the 41 this whole time. The only question mark has been the 10. We now know the 10 has a driver, Eric Almarola. So to me, that makes it sound like Cole Custer's going nowhere. But he also says that's their plan right now. In two weeks, plan could be a little different. In a month, plan could be very different. So maybe that means Custer goes back down to their Xfinity team. Maybe he goes over to Rick Ware Racing, an Alliance team. Maybe? I mean, there's multiple ways to interpret that. To me, it sounds like Custer is fairly locked in. But again, he just says, right now, that's the plan. I think it's still an option, but now things are way more complicated than they would have been if you were just trying to plug Kyle Busch into the open number 10 seat. Cole Custer's cheap, his dad works for the team, he has history with Stuart Haas Racing. I don't know how likely that is, but this is big news. Almirola staying in the 10 car, it's, it, on paper it doesn't sound like a major silly season bombshell, but considering the effect it has on Kyle Busch and maybe some other teams, it's big. I feel kind of bad for Ryan Priest. He's going to have to wait at least one more year to get that Cup Series ride. I think he, he feels he's owed signing on as SHR's development driver. But like I said, he's Kevin Harvick's replacement, so his time will come. Although, shoot, if Harvick keeps winning races, he may sign another contract. <laughs> I don't know. This is so complicated. Why can't Silly Season just not be silly? <laughs> Oh my goodness. All right, I have another video coming out in just a few short hours, but I wanted to share my initial thoughts on this Almarola news, how it affects Kyle Busch, SHR, everyone. Let me know down in the comment section below. How confident are you in SHR's ability to sign Kyle Busch? Do you think there's any chance it happens now? Share your thoughts down in the comment section below. That's gonna do it for this episode. Thank you so much for watching. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any future NASCAR news. This summer has been unreal. So many stories, so many bombshells. You're gonna to wanna to stay in the loop. Appreciate the support. Also appreciate all of you on Patreon. As always, going the extra mile to support the channel. Your generosity really means the world to me. Thank you guys so, so much. I will see you again later this evening and then Sunday night, Watkins Glen. Gonna be a fun weekend, real excited. Thanks for watching, y'all. Take it easy.